Hey guys, it's Linux next year, and in today's video, I want to talk about the experience I've had using my AMD GPU over the past couple of years. And I want to go down basically, you know, the experience I've had, but also explain the different aspects of the AMD GPU on Linux and like you know, how the, the drivers work and like how release cycles work as well to get like the best gaming performance out of your AMD GPU. Now, just for a bit of background, uh, I used to use my RTX 2060 as my main graphics card on Linux when I first switched over and it was a pretty decent experience. I did have to install like, you know, the proprietary drivers, which wasn't really a pain as much, uh, but also when using it, I had to use X11, which was a pretty outdated uh, display server, uh, which is no longer being used. So at the time I wanted to use Wayland as Wayland was becoming uh, pretty popular, I guess you say, in the Linux community. And I wanted to switch over to AMD because well, the Steam Deck uses RDNA 2 hardware. So I wanted to get more or, uh, I guess compatibility out of the games that I play and even possibly more performance uh, out of you know playing games through Proton which you can when you do switch over to AMD. So the GPU that I decided to buy at the time which was around oh, like two years ago almost uh, was an RX 6700 uh, 10 gigabyte the non-XT variant. I got it for around 399 uh, AUD which was a pretty good price at the time and uh, it wasn't actually a pretty good upgrade as well when it came to performance in general being a bit better that are about like maybe 20%, 30% better than my RCX 2060. And one of the first uh, problems that occurred when I decided to switch over to that AMD graphics card was that I was running Fedora and I had the NVIDIA drivers reinstalled. And when I switched over, uh, I forgot to uninstall the NVIDIA drivers. So the distro wouldn't boot properly because of those NVIDIA drivers being installed. And at the time I wasn't really experienced as much when it came to, you know, going into the TTY and um, uninstalling the drivers from there. So I had to reinstall uh, Fedora at the time, which was Fedora 38, I think. And after that uh, happened, after I reinstalled Fedora 38, I had a really good experience with uh, the AMD card. You know, the drivers uh, are pre-installed for you. So that was uh, really good, I would say, as a first experience. So what is uh, the AMD GPU kernel driver? Well, as, as it says, it's a kernel driver. So the driver is in the Linux kernel and it basically interacts with a lot of other things with within Linux, like, you know, has to interact with the uh, Mesa graphics stack, which is the user space driver. And it also has to interact probably with uh, Wayland. So then it can actually like, you know, display things on your monitor. And then you also may be thinking, well, what is Mesa? You just mentioned that, what the hell is that? Well, it is a user space driver within Linux. So basically you have uh, things like uh, different types of graphics APIs that it likes to interact with, like Vulkan and OpenGL and like Zinc as well. And inside of that, you also have like different types of graphics to interact with different graphics cards. So one for AMD is RADV. That's used for, you know, playing your games through Proton or Wine or native games as well with the graphics APIs like Vulkan and OpenGL. But not just that, there's other, you know, tools inside of Mesa for other companies like Intel. You would use Mesa as well. And you would probably use uh, ANV, I think it's called, for uh, playing games through Proton or native as well. And that's probably the one of the the good things about using a AMD GPU on Linux is out of the gate, you don't have to install any drivers. The drivers are already pre-installed for you, like the AMD GPU kernel driver, that's in the Linux kernel. And then you have Mesa, which will be installed on your Linux distro. And not just that, you know, you don't have to tweak uh, that much when it comes to using an AMD card. Uh, the only thing I had to change was my power profile because some distros, like I'm running Arch, so it's pretty um, vanilla. And that means there's a lot of stock defaults that may not be really good for playing games so like the power profile i had to switch my power profile to 3d full screen to uh, fix like vr flickering on my monitor so that it would actually be a smoother experience when playing those uh games that i wanted to play so you also may be thinking well what if i just install any distro you know it should just work right well that's not really the case and i think that's where some people like uh when they go on reddit and they ask for like you know what distro uh, should i install and i always ask them uh what's your hardware because if it's amd or Intel, I would recommend you use like a leading edge or a rolling based distro because you want to use the latest version of Mesa and the kernel. Now there is like other options, like you can, uh, you know, install a, let's say old Ubuntu based distro, like an LTS Ubuntu release, um, or any like distro, like KDE Neon, that could be one that you could use. And then you could just use Flatpak Steam or any Flatpak application. And that would use its own runtimes because in Flatpak, it has its own dependency. 
dependencies, meaning it has a newer Mesa version because Flatpak likes to update their Mesa version uh, a lot. Like right now, it's on the same version as the, same, the version I'm using on Arch. But like I said, whenever I would want to recommend a distro to someone, I would always say you should be using basically a rolling based distro or something like Fedora, for example, or OpenSUSE or Tumbleweed, because those distros, they like to test things, but they don't like to wait like two years to release packages. They do release packages basically consistently every couple of weeks, they'll release new packages for you. And so when like new Mesa versions come out, they test those. You may only have to wait like a couple of weeks or maybe up to a month on those distros to get that new Mesa version or kernel version. Uh, while on a rolling based distro like Arch or any other Arch based distro, or maybe in like Manjaro, uh, these packages usually come out within like a, like a week or two. And so you get, you know, these all, all these new features for your AMD card, either it be through the kernel or through Mesa. So what is the Mesa uh, release cycle? Well, it's kind of odd how the Mesa re release cycle works. Uh, sometimes it's like a month, like every, like before the release before have been around like a, a month or so. And then he releases a new version, but like the, the next one that's coming out, which is Mesa 24.1, that has not coming out till June. And I think that's because of a specific feature that they're all working on in different projects called explicit sync for in the Nvidia cards, but also for AMD cards also will get this feature, uh, but that's not coming till June. So that's, you know, that's two months away still. Well, you know, there's no release cycle really, like no big feature release happening uh, this month or last month, only just bug re fix releases. And then for the kernel release cycles, uh, well, the, you know, the kernel, uh, new kernel version comes out usually every month, uh, basically. Uh, pretty sure it comes out every month. Uh, that's how it's always been. And uh, that's pretty good, I would say. Uh, you get like the new features uh, when it comes to AMD GPU kernel driver fixes. So if there's any problems that you may face, I know a lot of people have had issues with uh, with the AMD GPU on Linux where they have like, you know, freezes on the desktop or the computer like freezing and restarting for no reason or, you know, the desktop crashing, stuff like that. That that seems to be a problem or like um, the core clock issue that people, people that have been having, which I have had no issues with those problems. Uh, all my games run at the maximum correct clock speed, but I haven't had uh, any of those issues at all. So what distro should you pick when it comes to, you know, if you want to move from Windows, for example, uh, to Linux, like what distro should you pick for your AMD card? Well, uh, like I said before, there, you know, any type of rolling based distro or any leading edge or bleeding edge uh, distro uh, that would suffice basically, uh, you know, rolling based distro to get the latest packages. So for example, I'm running Arch right now. If I switch to my uh, desktop, uh, I switch this monitor to the right one. You can see here that I am I am uh, running um, Arch Linux right now and uh, I get the latest packages for my GPU and kernel. So if it was coming down to you know, what distro you should pick, I would probably say uh, Manjaro, Arch, Endeavor OS, Fedora, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, Bazite, Nabara. Uh, those are all good distros. Pop OS, that's another one. Even though Pop OS runs off a LTS distro, they upgrade their kernel and Mesa regularly um, so that you do get a good gaming experience on AMD or Intel hardware. That's what I would say for, for picking the right distro. There's, there is probably another uh, couple distros that I've forgotten about, um, which are probably also really good distros, either it be immutable or not. Uh, but uh, like I said, you could either use these distros or you could also install like example, the Flatpak version of your apps that you want to use. And those will use a really new version of Mesa so that you can get a decent experience when playing games under an AMD or, or Intel card. And then maybe also, uh, can you use Wayland on your desktop? Because that's the new you know, uh, compositor that controls your monitors. Uh, should you, should be, can you use it? Well, yes, you can, you can use it. That was one of the main reasons that I moved off of Nvidia so that I could just use Wayland because uh, having things like multi-monitor issues, that is a problem that can occur and that doesn't happen on Wayland. You can have uh, different refresh rates and it doesn't clock to the lowest refresh rate of whatever monitors that you have. It just 144 hertz, 60 hertz. There's no issue. Uh, so when it comes to using Wayland or an AMD card or an Intel card as well, that is uh, really good. And also as a Windows user, uh, can you use the Adrenaline software? And no, you can't. Uh, we don't use uh, the Adrenaline uh, drivers on Linux. We use the open source drivers, which is the AMD GPU kernel and then REDV and Mesa and probably some other things in Mesa that are used for AMD. Uh, but we don't use those drivers 
drivers because, well, that is not on Linux. You can install uh, different drivers that AMD does provide, but more used for enterprise uh, use. I would not go down that path unless you are really into like certain applications that need certain features that the open source drivers don't have uh, that you would just use the open source drivers. So no, you can't use the adrenaline software, but what are the alternatives for solving that? Because with the adrenaline software, you got things like, I think you can like, you can overclock, I think. Uh, you can change different settings for d games like lower latency. You can stream and record with it. So what other software can you use with, with that alternative? And the first one would be like for, if you want to overclock or change like fan speeds, or uh, like I said, the overclock or undervolt or underclock, I would probably use LACT. So if we go to my desktop here, even though I don't have my camera, that should be fine. Uh, LACT is a great application. I rolled the wrong application. Uh, there you go. This is a awesome, uh, simple tool for overclocking, changing your power, changing your power level modes. Like I said here, I had to change mine to 3D full screen to get the maximum, not maximum performance, but just like fix flickering issues that would happen. And as you can see here, uh, my maximum GPU clock is at 2800, where the default is at 2600, I think. Uh, so you can also change thermals as well. You know, I've got a curve applied right now and it all works properly as well. Uh, when you first launch it, uh, it will just come up and ask you if it wants to enable like their um, service, which you would want to agree to it so that it can um, apply the correct things for your GPU. And I would say that's a really good application for overclocking. Now, if it was like something else, like let's say you wanted to record with an AMD card, like encode at a like really good quality, then the other application I would uh, say would be GPU screen recorder. And uh, with these applications like GPU screen recorder, you can grab this easily from your store. So here it is here is the flat pack version. I'm using the system version version so that it matches my theme uh, but it works really well and it's really simple you got your video quality your frame rate you can add different audio tracks uh, if you want to do that you can also change like what monitor you want to use and you can change this to advance if you want to individually change like the video codec so you can change it to HEVC with HDR or just regular HEVC or H.264 and you can also change the audio codec in like I said you can change the uh, frame rate mode so you can change it to constant or you can change it to a variable uh, frame frame rate as well with also you know showing uh, video save notification or you can also record the cursor so that the cursor actually shows up when you're recording a uh, different gameplay there is also like you can stream on this uh, i wouldn't recommend that you do stream on this because uh it decides to like use the maximum bit rate and it that like breaks the streaming even though the bit rate on twitch is 6000 it will actually go over that and it will cause problems now last time i tried that was a very long time ago so maybe different that's just been my experience experience with um, streaming on that. And there's also a replay system. So you can, uh, you know, if you are getting cool clips in like, I don't know, some FPS game or just clips in general in some game that you're playing with your friends, you can like, you know, create like a hotkey. Now hotkeys don't uh, work uh, properly on Wayland. They only work on X11, but that is getting changed. At some point this will be supported, but you can see here, we can, you know, save the replay. We can change the container to a different coder and we can also do the replay time in seconds and then of course the other application that we can use is obs which is you know probably the most popular recording and streaming software that you could use uh, it does have a lot of options so it can be i guess why some people don't use it and they'll just use something like gpu screen recorder because that's a lot more simpler uh, but you know this this serves a, a really good purpose for streaming or recording uh, basically if you want to get like varpy co encoding you just needed to enable the advanced option and then you can switch to uh like for me uh, for streaming i would use the varpy h.264 and then for recording i'm using the hevc i'm um, encoder right now and i have set it to like 30,000 bit rate and yeah, as you can see it does do a quite a good job when it comes to the quality of recording or streaming uh gameplay whatever that may be so my conclusion is that uh using amd on linux and explaining uh what you know each part of what makes it AMD GPU work with the driver uh, 
is a pretty good experience and it, it meshes really well when you are using it because everything kind of just, just works. There's no real big problems when it comes to using an AMD card on Linux anymore, really. I, I think there's a lot of people on uh, on naysayers, you know, that are on Reddit that say, you know, AMD's bad, you know, there's all these problems and there isn't many problems with using an AMD card. It's if you use the open source drivers and not VLK or let's say the AMD GPU Pro driver, but you don't use those unless you're like into like enterprise applications you want to be using the amd gpu kernel driver and then mess up with like redv to play your games okay, so that's the other one uh you know also like playing games is <laughs> really good uh, the performance uh is really uh like on par with windows and the majority of the time your games are going to perform a bit better than windows also there's a lot of games that do perform better on linux through proton just because of how i guess the amd gpu driver is designed and how it's made for the steam deck so the performance is probably pretty damn good so if you guys enjoyed uh this video i would definitely give it a like you can definitely subscribe to the channel as well and thank you to my supporters on the channel as well and i'll see you guys in the next video peace